Hello, and welcome back to Gameplay Animation Show or Review. My name's Christian John Duke, and uh, I'm an animation director in the video games industry. I've been away a while, I've been focusing on GDC and my day job, but I wanted to thank everyone for their support. So thank you very much. This shows to me that there's clearly something that you guys find interesting. So of course I want to keep improving these and hopefully I'm going to try and tighten up the format a little bit. So I often see reels from people trying to break into the video games industry not really knowing what they need to do. So the reel we're going to look at today is a very typical example. Someone that just wants to be an animator and doesn't really know whether they want to be in films or games. I'm not really looking at technical ability, looking at animation ability. If you do have technical ability, of course this is a bonus. So usually I'd like to see these reels as fresh as possible so you see exactly what I see when I see it but in the spirit of improving these and tightening them up a little bit I've decided that I'm going to start to prepare a little bit more and hopefully this makes for a more focused review. So an animator by the name of Michael Deliso contacted me after meeting Gwen Frey at PAX this year. Now Gwen and I were both at GDC very kindly been saying that I do these show reviews and that he might find them useful. Okay so first for context let's have a look at Michael's entire reel using a gameplay eye to try and explain what I'm seeing and where I think things can be improved. Okay, so first off, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through each shot. It should explain what I'm seeing and will hopefully give you an idea of the sort of things that I'd be looking for. Okay, so this first shot, um, it's typical kind of three hit combo with a finisher. And that to me already kind of piques my interest. If we look at how many frames of anticipation there are there, one, two, three, four, five, six, 17 frames of anticipation there. Um, that's quite a lot, although it's only half a second, that's still quite a lot. So if you want this to be a heavy swing, you really need to grab with two hands, or you could really twist that torso as well. And also the fact that when you bend it here, it makes it look a little bit rubbery. What I would also suggest that at this point see we don't really have any clear contact frames so contact frames need to connect just makes things a lot easier and usually for readability will make things a lot clearer I like the fact that you are putting weight on that back foot it works because you're countering here and then you've also got this line there and you can see that this has kind of opened up this nice shape here you know so it feels like this is leading into something lead with the shoulder a little bit more so you're kind of doing this and also have a look at your follow through you see the wrist here you could probably extend this up a little bit excuse my drawing i'm drawing with a mouse um, but you could certainly have this extension kind of follow through and then maybe have this shape lean back in this sort of curve so also with the, the follow through you can see it kind of it kills momentum here just there so it stops I'd have that momentum carry through so the arm's still going back, but then have that step through still still go. So at no point does the sword really stop moving. It just kind of slows down into it. You've got your arm and your head and your torso and your shoulders all connected together. So I would certainly have that sword drag back a little bit, and that will also show the weight. Um, so then when you do step in, it looks like you're kind of swinging through like that. Um, make sure that that is clear as well. I mean, it looks like you've bent the sword. Um, I would try and keep that sword straight. So something I like to do is I like to add like a little red tip on the end because then you get to see kind of the trajectory of, of where it's come from. So with that red tip, it just helps readability. It helps see things a little bit clearer. With the torso, you've got this bone here and this bone here and maybe there is another bone in here. If you have the three bones there, then what I'd like to see is you dissipate the action through from the, the basically the solar plexus all the way through to the chest. And by that I mean I want to see you slow down that rotation through those bones. Not all of them ending at the same time. And then things won't get as static. So if I turn off overlays here, you can see again, it's like he hits 
and then everything kind of stays still it's almost like it's in slow motion you know and then what i would have is i'd have that rotation on the torso over rotate a little bit and then you're going in for the stab now i'd really want you to push this pose here i think this is kind of cool um, and the same goes for this i like the pose that you've got on the toe there pull this arm and this sword back you know and then maybe rotate this torso a little bit more so then the head would be here you know and then you're really pushing again making sure that it's always balanced as well that weight is starting to transfer from that back foot over to the front foot and then also you see the way that if we kind of do the tip thing again and you see that the tip goes from there and the next frame is there i would try and bring this up to here again to make it clearer and then that means that we get like a nice line going through there Again, for gameplay, readability is absolutely key. This will make sure that your impact is direct and as smooth as possible as well. Then I would try and clean this. I think it ends up being over noisy. It doesn't need to be an up, down, up. You know, like I'd like to see some rotation again in the torso. If you have the the head and the, the upper body here go first, then again it will show the fact that there's some resistance in the arms as the, the sword is stabbing through this character. I probably wouldn't put in a, an extra up. Bring that down so you're kind of bringing that, that, that anticipation down so you can boom and then pop up. Okay, you see you've done, you've done some nice torso rotation. Try not to hold a pose for too long. Continue that flow of your move going through uh, the hit. Swing, 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 swing. Go all the way through that and then end up here. So I would make sure that I'm spinning on this toe kind of pin this toe and instead of having this foot slide and then really put your weight onto that foot and instead of sliding into place land on it so putting that toe down first and then maybe having a little bit of rotation on that foot this is where you would hold so you had holds all the way through your your animation and then the one place i want you to hold you haven't held and <laughs> everything needs to transfer off of this leg i would keep that foot pinned for maybe two to three more frames and then that weight can then transfer back over from this leg to something here the next thing i would ask would be the purpose of this you know maybe kind of shake and make it like okay you really you know so really have a show of strength if you're going to do it but again make sure that it makes sense with the rest of it act it out and you'll find that something will probably come from that i was acting this out when looking at it i automatically started kind of looking around as if i was really proud of what i wanted to do so i think that's always something useful for you to to have a look at so this to me just comes down to acting choices. From an animation perspective, I would just want to see you push this as much as possible. I love to see contrast between slow and fast. Look at the shapes you're making and where your balance is. I think just from a biomechanic standpoint, that would be something that I would always focus on. Have these limbs, don't have them finish so abruptly, but and you see the way this arm comes over. I'd probably have it follow through a little bit further and have that slow down and that would give you a nice arc coming into this next move with the hand. Again, and you always want it to be readable kind of everything comes to a stop at the same time i would have things overlap but other than that i like it so then let's have a look at shot three i think is pretty cool i like it it's clear it's readable like it done in a very stylized way which i i always love this sort of stuff got some nice secondary motion on the ears up here is really nice but i would have the foot impact the floor the foot is flopping down but then you see no real weight gets transferred over to this foot so certainly bring this foot down here and again you're really kind of trying to push off so bring this foot back maybe that'll be, be about bringing this clavicle back as well a little bit you can have more weight on this foot so then when it can flick up like that it works a lot better but from a showcase point of view i think what might also work is you've got this kind of three quarter view and you've got this side view then maybe having a front view in there as well. again just so you can actually see where the weight is but the fact that you've got a dog walk on there i think is really interesting creature walks are uh, obviously a lot harder to do so this shows that you're not shying away from complicated animation as well. I love that you've added facial animation into your reel. It's a very short shot. From an acting point of view, he's clearly taking a sniff, but I want to know whether he likes it or not. You know, kind of he's indifferent. Try and go one of either way. Maybe show some kind of flare in the nostrils. You know, it's like the eyes go wide. It looks like you have actually put some flare in the nostrils. Yeah, you can see just there. You've put just a little bit. I would push that. You know, like if this is a stylized animation, it's so subtle that it's really hard to tell. You know, like really have that exhale. 
that sort of idea. I'd like to see this extended into like emotional transitions to show a range of emotion. You know, like if he's happy, angry, surprised, scared, confused, I don't know, you know, like seeing through all those transitions shows your understanding of what these emotions would look like, but also shows how you could transition between them and would hold my attention a little bit longer. But well done for putting facial animation on your reel anyway. It's something that I haven't really done much of. This is an interesting one because it's something I like to see traversal sequences handling different environments, you know, like with jumping, climbing. It's something that we do a lot of in games. Um, and I can see that there's some good animation in here. The problem I have with it, there's lots of camera cuts which are almost hiding all the interesting parts. So I should really be able to see at a first glance what sort of style that you could bring to the table. Straight out the gate, do this as a one shot. It could effectively be side scrolling and you have it as one shot and you have this character with all of these obstacles, but in just one unbroken shot. Now if you can't do that, I would also recommend you remove the motion blur. So I strongly suggest you show this in a simpler, cleaner way. This is a perfect sequence to show gameplay intentions. Don't make me work to see how good an animator you are. You can clearly see that you have animation ability. It's just, it's almost like you're hiding it. You've hidden the pose with a cut. And you've got some good extension. Have that extension all the way up to the impact. And then, then it absorbs in. It looks like the ankles break. The momentum in the roll to the next shot is covered with a cut. So you could maybe even get rid of this shot and then just go from this shot and then show this animation from this angle, you know, and then have that roll in there. So you take out a camera cut and I think that already helps you. And then if you see issues in the animation, then, then you can fix them a lot easier. I like to see them as unbroken sets of animation. And then you want to see this transition from the roll have this spring up go into the jump and then that would actually make this sequence flow a lot nicer be careful of this hyper extension as well you could very easily fix this with just bringing the clavicle down here and have these legs swing over asymmetrically as well so don't have them both go over at the same time but i would swing this leg through so it comes through and lands a lot earlier and then have this follow after but i would take this through from here as well always look at how that flow of an animation is going through to the next move really slap that foot down you know you could bring those toes up if you wanted to have that extra and as it's hitting then it's kind of slapping down you see that weight is already over there so you want that foot down then that will then allow you to push off with the toes try not to hyper extend and again you've cut the the, the show of strength with the camera cut I'd want to see that as well, so I'd maybe want to see this from a different camera angle. Make sure you've got that hand pin down there, look at the clavicle, and then you could really have that weight push through this. It would actually give you a bit more room to bring this leg up. The foot is there, but the ankle's facing this way, but the knee's facing this way. And the reason you can't do that is because this elbow's in the way. So if you can find a way of moving this elbow, or either it's bringing it forward, bringing this clavicle up, again it just gives this, this knee a bit more room. Bring this foot here then make that a little bit easier for you as well always make sure you ground your feet because here it kind of looks like he slips you see and you could probably have this step go through a little further as well um, I really like the idea of this shot it's a really good way of showcasing your animation ability always try and maintain flow through sequences like this these are the things that we always want to see it starts to draw attention to things that you don't really want attention being drawn to and i think that even if you weren't to do this as one long shot i think just removing some of the camera cuts would really help you okay and that brings us to this last shot uh, now i kind of like what it is i love how simplistic it is and the thing that i like about this shot is it's effectively a different take on the flower sack it's really simple geometry and this is just purely about acting I like that you've got some jiggle on the hat. I like that you've got some squash and stretch. What I'd like to see is more. So then I'd really push this squash and stretch and then don't have it hang in the air. Have it still rising. Never kill that motion in the air. Always have it either rising or falling, you know, but keep that arc, really extend this like fully, like whomp, just go down. And then you can have a bit more squash into this as well. I think, but let's have a little look at the timing of this. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because you've done everything super quick here. But I feel like it just could be spaced out a little bit more. Like with the impact of hitting the book, you'd imagine that the wand would travel further in the air. The action, the reaction, I think could be pushed a little bit. Once the wand's hit, I kind of want to see this part play out a little bit more because then it will draw my attention to it. You know, have him like look around as if he's kind of confused, like, oh, wait a minute. So he'd be like, <laughs> <sighs> not really sure where he ended up. 
kind of play on this part as well the fact that he's come out sees the wand you know and then is he looking over there to see whether the magician's looking maybe he doesn't even need this look and then maybe you could have some some jiggle on the on the hat and then as the hat goes out you come boom you can hang in the air a little bit still carrying that momentum down gets hit in the wand boom ends up in the cage where am i where am i where am i oh i'm in the cage Overall, it's it's an interesting reel. I, I want to see more. I would extend out your facial shot. I love that you have shown creature animation, three-hit combo, traversal. You have all the parts. You just need to focus on those fundamentals, and that would be the area that I'd recommend that you focus on as well. Overall, it's a good structure. You would certainly be considered for a junior role, making the traversal sequence easier to read. I'd say this role is kind of a nice balance of gameplay and cinematic, and I think it just maybe needs a couple more shots. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you submitting this reel to me, Michael. I'd love to see what you do with this afterwards. Please keep in touch, and uh, hopefully that helps. Okay, so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Hopefully by me sharing these insights and this information, this will also encourage you to share back with us too. Uh, my name is Christian Jonju. This has been Gameplay Animation Show Review. Until next time, take care, and uh, good luck. I'm trying to play, the